Welcome to the ML AI Tools to Advance Genomic Translational Research, pronounced Imagine, Notice of Funding Opportunity webinar. I would like to recognize the team involved in the NOFO process. And we thank you all for joining today. So um, a word about the webinar logistics. All participants will be muted. Zoom chat has been disabled during the presentation. Please, however, feel free to submit any questions or comments at any time using the Zoom Q&A feature. And this Q&A will be monitored throughout the webinar and we will answer questions as we see. This webinar will be recorded and available for viewing on the Imagine website a few days after the webinar. Please email any unanswered questions or additional questions you may have to the email addresses shown there. These are also listed on the NOFOs. The FAQs on the website will be updated without further announcements, so we encourage you to visit them periodically, especially when you have questions. So we'll start with a quick overview. Uh, we'll present the purpose, objectives of the NOFO, the program structure, the scope, um, including the institute's specific interest, eligibility criteria, important dates, followed by FOQs based on the questions we have already received. Please note that the slides being present today highlight key aspects. Please make sure that you review the full NOFO for details. So the purpose is to invite applications to explore the feasibility of application of machine learning and artificial intelligence, abbreviated to MLAI tools, to enhance the accuracy and precision of predicting how individuals with pathogenic genetic variants manifest disease. And I want to emphasize here that it is germline uh, mutations and not somatic mutations. And importantly, that they should be associated in a, uh, they, they should have known pathogenic effects on the disease. So the opportunity. This is a figure from the NHGRI strategic vision published in the Nature Reference here, and it depicts a continuum between basic research and clinical care and implementation on the right-hand side. There is need to utilize the advances in technologies to actually translate genomic research findings into tools for potential future clinical applications. That is, we need tools that bridge basic and implementation and clinical care research. And this bridge here is referred to as the translational genomic, um, genomic translational research tools. And the, the clinician here in this image that we actually, uh, which we actually pulled from Canva, which actually is using AI ML to generate the images, um, is this, these tools should be developed with disease expert involvement through the design, development, and testing, because the long-term vision for successful tools would be to then test them in clinical implementation settings. So to clarify, this particular initiative is going to focus not on adoption or clinical implementation, but really in this translational genomic research settings. Um, coming then uh, to the objectives. Recently, there has been increasing access to large multimodal and rich data sets, including genomics, clinical, social determinants of health, environmental, and all of these data are being increasingly available, right? In made available in a fair manner, fair standing for findable, accessible, interoperable, and um, reusable. And this is due to uh, you know, the community using standards. And these data can be in diverse sources such as EHRs, public repositories, biobanks. Um, and what we want to do is to have advances. We, or we also have advances in computing. And this has really made it possible to leverage these large data sets for successfully training ML AI tools. 
Now, we also have reference data being accumulated, which can inform such training. So in this, uh, in this uh, no folk, we, uh, we request applications to propose to develop MLAI tools trained on such existing multimodal large data sets for known pathogenic variants and associated with diseases to enhance the accuracy and precision of predicting how individuals will manifest disease. And importantly then identify genomic and non-genomic factors that influence disease development. And uh, we, um, we, uh, we uh, recommend that you send that your applications propose pathogenic variants, diseases, and data sets for development and for cross-validation, which are part of the NOVO, in settings designed to enable the testing of such tools for robustness and generalizability for translational purposes. Importantly, they should allow investigation of ethical, legal, and social implications of integrating such MLAI tools in genomic medicine. This is going to be done via establishing an LC framework and also implementing LC research projects. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, is unique about this initiative is that it is designed to be highly collaborative and the program structure to support such collaboration is explained in the next few slides. Um, I want to just highlight here a couple of definitions. Once again, as I mentioned, the NOFO includes all of the definitions, but I highlight here a couple important ones. An MLAI tool is a validated standalone software package that includes MLAI pipelines and model parameters that can be implemented and cross-validated. Genomic translational research it refers to integration of basic patient-oriented and population-based based research performed in an academic setting that mimics clinical settings with the long-term potential for integrating them into genomic medicine. So coming to the program structure, the MHN NOFO is a cooperative agreement with NHGRI program involvement. We plan to award two to four development sites, maximum annual total cost allowed per site is 1.6 million. A single coordinating center will be awarded to support the coordinating activities of the consortium with maximum annual direct costs of 800K. The, the emergent sites Teams will include expertise in MLAI tool development and cross-validation, multimodal data sets, pathogenic genetic variants and disease, and LC framework and research. Complementarily, the coordinating center for, for coordination activities will provide, will have expertise in technical, scientific, and administrative coordination. They will support the development of consensus-driven consortium resources support cross validation plan, develop a data model, and develop a dissemination plan, all of it with input from the development sites. Now, there is a governance of the consortium that will include the steering committee and an external scientific panel. The consortium will collaborate with to decide um, research priorities optimal research approaches and best practices and consortium-wide milestones. So the approach is a phased approach. So years one and two are the design phase. And um, at the end of this phase, um, a transition package will be submitted by the uh, sites, by the um, members. And an administrative review will be performed and the transition from the UG3 to UH3 will depend on the awardees meeting the consortium-wide milestones that will be developed during year one and two. And the transition details, I will come to that in a separate slide. The development and validation is part of years three to five, and they will be 
funded via the UH3 mechanism, the application should include research plan and budget justification, however, for the entire five years. Please review the no for for details as well. So coming to the design phase, which is years one and two, the outcomes of the development sites are the foundational resources for future of this initiative, right, for UHD. Consortium-wide, the LC framework, gene sets will be chosen for develop through development and cross-validation, and the cross-validation plan will be developed. Now, in a site-specific manner, they will, they will pro uh, prepare two ready data sets for development and cross-validation. They will also define the tool requirements for the tools that they will develop and the LC research projects that they will implement in phase two. I just want to emphasize that there is no primary data generation. The coordinating center during this design phase, their activities will include coordination activities, including scientific and administrative. The scientific activities will be to lead the development of consortium-wide data models, MLAI tool, and LC dissemination plan. The administrative coordination will include facilitating scientific consensus development, meeting coordination, tracking milestones, develop uh, consortium-wide best practices and policies. So I mentioned before that there is a transition. So there's a little bit of detail here in transition, but please refer to the more for Consideration for, uh, for uh, transition from the UG3 to UH3 is contingent upon submission of the transition package by each of the awardees and satisfactory uh, progress towards the UG3 milestones and determined internally by an HERI. There is no guarantee of subsequent UH3 award. The criteria to determine if satisfactory progress has been made in meeting consortium milestones and deliverables include, but are not, not limited to those stated in the NOFO. In the event of a UH3 award, all UG, UH3 recipient PEPIs and the NHGRI staff will negotiate the final list of milestones for the entire consortium for each year of support. The milestones proposed in the individual applications by the image and sites may be revised and approved by the NHGRI during the UG3 and UH3 phases to align with the consortium-wide milestones to meet the goals of the notebook. The development and validation that occurs during years three to five, um, the outcomes of the development sites are the cross-validated MLAI tools, findings which could include gaps and best practices, um, and then the dissemination plan. And the coordinating center will continue to support consortium-wide activities and any other adjustments. Um, the administrative coordination will include dissemination to the external community, tracking milestones and meetings. I want to highlight uh, the National Institute of Aging specific interest uh, While well, the NHGRI is agnostic, um, the National Institute of Aging leads the federal, uh, is, is disease agnostic. The National Institute of Aging leads the federal government in conducting and supporting research on aging and the health and well-being of older people and is leads within the NIH for research on Alzheimer's disease and related forms of dementia abbreviated to ADA. ADRD. We they invite proposals. MHN, uh, we invite you to propose MHN site applications that align with NIA's mission and that focus on pathogenic variants that are associated with diseases and conditions associated with growing older and those of ADRD. So that is the NIA specific interest. And they also have suggested certain data resources of interest, and I'm going not going to read those. Uh, but you know, as I, as we mentioned, we will be sharing the webinar and we'll put we'll, we'll those. Um, I want to highlight non-responsive applications. These are applications that propose new primary data generation, 
or and I want to clarify here about what we mean by primary data generation. This is data that's going to be generated. That's that this is specific to the data that would be used to develop the tools. We realize that during the LC research phase, there will be data that will be generated and collected as part of maybe surveys. So um, and those applications that propose solely developing in silico variant effect predictors or generate a catalog of variant uh, effects or elucidate gene function, biological pathways or networks without application to translational genomics research. research. Applications that don't propose a combined total of at least four candidate genes with pathogenic variants and associated human diseases for MLAI tool development and cross validation. And we expect two genes of these for de development, a minimum. This is a minimum, I think. And um, applications that don't propose a plan for cross validation. Applications that don't propose at least one research project to explore LC issues related to integration of MLAI tools into potential genomic medicine applications. There are no such criteria for non-responsiveness for the CC notebook. Eligibility criteria. Um, I'm not going to go to the details of any one, uh, each one of these, but I want to highlight a couple of questions, uh, a couple of, um, because certain questions have come up recently, and that is uh, that for-profit organizations are allowed and are eligible applicants. And the other is that uh, foreign institutions, as defined in the NIH grants policy statement, uh, they're allowed in the uh, sites notebook, however, only as components. With the coordinating center, um, the, the um, list is similar. However, with foreign institutions, they are not allowed on the CC notebook. Important dates, you know, the NOFO was released on May 10th, and uh, today we are here. The, this is the last day to submit the letter of intent. Of course, it's optional. Um, July 26th is the due date for the applications, due by 5 p.m., and the estimated earliest start date is between April and June of next year, 2025. So I will begin to review uh, frequently asked questions that were sent. Um, and uh, so eligibility, as I mentioned, can foreign institutions participate in Imaging Coordinating Center? No, they cannot participate. Multiple applications. Can one institution apply for both the Imaging Sites and the Coordinating Center? No, of course. Yes, applicant organizations may submit more than one application, provided that each application is scientifically distinct. How would we encourage you to carefully consider the roles and responsibilities of the investigators in the context of the review criteria in each such application? And this is in the review and selection process section of the notebooks. Outcome. What are potential outcomes of such tools? Outcomes of tools should be relevant in genomic translational research as defined in the notebook. And these could be, as an example, patient stratification to tailor recommendations related to preventative care, treatments, frequency of screening, etc. Scope of and then those as relates to variants. Does pathogenic variant refer only to germline variant? As I mentioned, yes, it does refer only to germline variant. Variant annotation, can the proposal include development of AMMLAI tools for functional annotation of variants? Applications that solely develop in silico, post develop solely in silico variant effect predictors, generate a catalog variant effects or elucidating gene function, are not considered responsive um, if they're not relevant directly for translational genomics research. Um, and will result in the application being withdrawn. You may, however, incorporate such tools with such functionality within your model. Penetrance. Are MLAI model, models developed to enhance the prediction of penetrance of pathogenic variants responsive to the NOFO? Yes, predicting penetrance of pathogenic variants could enhance the prediction of how individuals with pathogenic variants manifest disease, which is really the goal of this notebook, 
but applicants should clearly describe how ML AI models predicting penetrance relate to how individuals manifest disease and will help identify genomic and non-genomic factors that affect penetrance. Data sets. What is the requirement for describing data sets in the proposal? The proposed multimodal data sets, including EHR data, should be well described, including summary statistics and access to the data sets to allow their evaluation for adequacy and availability to develop and cross-validate the tools. The summary statistics should also include, um, should include sufficient details to assess the proposed LC projects and other specific aims. So can you cross-validation? And this is uh, has a multi-part to it. Um, so can, if, can you clarify the requirements for the cross-validation plan? So in the first uh, bullet here, we will go over the platform specific uh, notes. The cross-validation plan should include a detailed description of how the tools proposed by the applicant image and site will be made portable to allow the other image and sites in the consortium to cross-validate their tools, either in a consortium selected common platform or at a member, image and member members. The cross-validation platform could be a cloud-based platform or on-prem computing cluster or any other HPC system that is adequate for the task a description of any anticipated challenges for implementing and cross-validating tools developed by the other image and sites and platforms they propose for such cross-validation should be described. Applicants are welcome to propose their own data sets to cross-validate their models, perhaps data from an alternate medical system with different population characteristics and other features. The applications should also include a detailed description of the availability and any anticipated barriers to the use of such data sets for cross-validating tools developed by other emergent sites. Applicants, however, are reminded that ultimately during the course of the UG3 phase, the consortium-wide cross-validation plan will be developed anew and jointly by the consortium in concert with the NHGRI program staff to best meet the goals of the notebook. Choosing gene sets. Can you clarify this activity, selecting the consortium gene set for MLAI tool development? Applicants should propose gene sets and data that will help you answer the specific aims in your application. During the UG3 phase, the consortium will collectively select the best, the subset of consensus genes and data sets for tool development and cross-validation based on meeting the goals of the notebook. LC research. The RFA states that applications cannot generate new primary data for the project. However, could collecting data for the LC objectives be in scope? Yes, this would be in scope. Evidence of access to data sets. Um, the RFA suggests we should provide verification of accessibility, for example, include evidence of approvals by data ex committees, head of research, etc. Um, some of these may not be in letters of support. Can they be included in appendix? Yes, you may include the designated authority approvals for using the data as proposed in your application in the appendix. Disease focus. Are any specific disease groups being targeted? This NOFO is intended to be disease agnostic. Can applications focus on any disease? Please see the review considerations listed over in subsection two and under the section four application review information. But as we mentioned during the UG3 phase, the, collect the consortium will collectively select a subset of consensus genes and data sets for tool development cross validation. I just wanted to point out again, as we mentioned, the National Institute of Aging has issued a notice of participation to align with NIE's mission. Collaboration and facilitation, how will uh, collaboration facilitation, how will collaboration with the research consortium be facilitated? So while each emergent site is responsible for working collaboratively with all members in the consortium to achieve the goals of the NOFO, Please see the uh, MLAI tools to advance, you know, the coordinating center NOFO. 
for how they will support the coordination of the consortium activities. Common data model, what is meant by the common uh, data model development? The common data model is a standard and extensible collection of schemas, entities, attributes, and relationships that represent the data used by the AI tools with well-defined semantics to facilitate data interoperability. This model then should allow for seamless deployment, training, and cross-validation of models across sites. Expertise and project management. The RFA describes a project manager with role with effort. Can you clarify if this is a distinct role from the PIs? And if so, what are expected duties of this role? The project manager PM responsibilities includes all activities, administrative, day-to-day -day strategic, and the PM would be the single and primary point of contact for other groups. This role can be performed by a PI, if they have the expertise and if adequate time is dedicated specifically for such activities, which can be hard for PIs to do, given their other scientific responsibilities, simply. Um, expertise in multidisciplinary. Do you require each applicant team to include expertise to achieve all of the goals of the NOFO? Yes. The applicant teams need to be self-reliant in all expertise required to achieve the stated aims and thus include multidisciplinary expertise to enable the development, validation, and cross-validation of the tools and the LC framework development and to conduct the LC research projects. Expertise of clinical, how integral is clinical expertise to the activities of the NOFO? Definitely very important. Clinical expertise should be integrated at all stages, as we discussed. Uh, of uh, so that the developed tools and other resources will be informed by such expertise and potentially have utility in clinical settings in the future. Uh, I, I just want to notice an error item uh, that may cause some confusion. However, the link is accurate based on the phrase in the image in NOFO. I think there was a typo. This um, the, it's at 23005 uh, relators RFA HG24005. So. Mm -hmm. Um, there is there the there is no award that has been made. So with this, I thank you. Um, and as I mentioned, to be recorded and available. Um, and I uh, we look forward to questions that have come in, and uh, we will answer them if they have not been already answered. Uh, so opening it up there, and uh, yeah. So the other panelists will now come online. Okay, so there is one question in the chat that is the NHGRI more interested in screening applications, which are generally pre-symptomatic as result return, or diagnostic, where it would be more focused on disease progression? Rob, did you want to take that? Sure, I think we'd be interested in both, Would but would want you to explain why you're taking that approach. Okay, the next question is what resources can be used to obtain a list of pathogenic variants? Uh, is variance pathogenicity has to be determined using ACMG, AMP, CAP, or ClinGen standards for sequence variant classification? Rob, do you want to take that again? It would be ACMG criteria. Okay. Should the 30PP research strategy be spent addressing the 10 parts detailed in the NOFO only without separate traditional sections for on significance, innovation, and approach? Or applicants advised to divide these pages across traditional research strategy sections and NOFO specific sections? So the entire page limit for the plan is 30 pages. If you have a specific question, again, please contact us. I mean, in general, you can write your application any which way you want. Um, you should, if you're going to use the suggested approach of the sections as defined in the NOFO, for each one of those sections, you can write the significance innovation and approach for each one of them.
Okay. Next question is looking for a clarification from the admin section. Um, quoting, describe staff recruitment efforts to meet the proposed timelines and milestones. It seems sites are expected to have staff available at this time of application. Is there any clarity that we can provide on that? Yes, we expect that the staff should be available, especially given the tight timeline. Year one and two is really critical in meeting, making sure that the deliverables are achieved especially because it's a very highly collaborative um, project. So yes. Um, next, there's an LC question. Are LC research projects that investigate issues related to the potential implementation of these MLAI tools responsive, as opposed to research projects that investigate LC issues in tool development, per se? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, I think these both uh, both of those types of LC issues are yeah you can study either in either stage of the development or the implementation of the tool development. Yeah. Okay, is the page limit for the coordinating center research strategy the standard twelve pages? Noted that site's page limit is only thirty pages. Yes, the coordinating center is limited to twelve pages. Manifesting disease can mean many different things here, and the machine learning methods or tasks will depend on how these outcomes are defined. How much rigidity or flexibility is there in uh, specifying these in the applications? Are these important to define before the consortium meets? They can be specified in the application. Uh, they will be need required because you need to justify why and how you're going to use your data sets. And so you need to make sure that you have explained um, what you mean by disease manifestation, but they could be any, they, they don't have to be specific to disease progression or um, uh, any other such uh, specific um, chronology. Rob, did you wanna say anything more? Yeah, I mean, we'd expect people in their application to actually explain. I mean, just a simple example is breast cancer. Are you mapping to adenocarcinoma? <laughs> are, are you mapping to DCIS? Are you mapping to what type of ER positive breast cancer? So you could, you just need to be explicit in terms of what you had planned to map to, that you'd have the data to do. We recognize that there might not be data to those subtypes. Yeah. There's a question on the relationship to Anvil. What does NHGRI envision Imagine Consortium's relationship with Anvil to be? Will Anvil be making any plans to support collaboration with Imagine? So this will be decided during year one and two. Uh, we will work with the Anvil team if Anvil is the chosen platform as a consensus. Um, it is not clear at this time their involvement, but um, it will be up to the uh, sites to work, understand, and use the Anvil. Um, the coordinating center will provide liaisoning activities with the Anvil team. Valentino, did you want to say anything? All right, there's another LC question. To what extent are the LC research project aims meant to be fully developed now versus the end of year two, where they might better reflect the consortium's decisions in year one and two? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you should. So there, it should definitely have at least one LC research project that's um, uh, described in your application and that, that that fits best within your you know proposed aims. Um, and you can always look at the research plan of the NOFO where it talks about exactly what level of detail is needed with regard to both the LC framework and the LC research projects. Great. Uh, another question. We have observed using our AI tools to define deleterious variants stringently, uh, that they have similar risk to known pathogenic variants in real world populations but under current ACMG criteria, not classifiable as pathogenic, if we incorporate those variants into our A models. Will it fit this project? Rob? 
I guess that's more of the question. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. We have observed using ours to define deleterious variants stringently, that they have similar risk to known pathogenic variants in real-world populations, but under current ACMG criteria, not classifiable as pathogenic. If we incorporate those variants in our AI models, will it fit this project? I think if I'm understanding it correctly, so if you have a pathogenic variant in BRCA and you have other variants that would contribute to that risk, that's the kind of the way that that would be another factor that would be feasible to use. I think what they may be also asking is if, according to ACMG criteria, they are not deleterious, but then they know of certain deleterious pathogenic variants outside of this ACMG list, would they be considered? Is what they're asking. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think if they can justify the use yeah, of it, that, then we would. If the data is saying that. If the data is saying that, then we would. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. That appears to be all of the questions as of right now, but please feel free to continue to ask. A question popped up. Would that be primarily uh, generative? So the, the, the data for training the tools should be available. Now, derived data is not considered uh, as data generation, but um, I hope that answers your question. You can't generate raw data for tool development, in other words. So you should have data. Can we generate data for the sake of validation? No. You have to have come with data sets that are available for validation. And during the course, if we decide that the tools are such that there are different diseases that are chosen and you know, there may be some chance for that, but really in your proposal, make sure that you have validation data available for your gene sets that you've chosen. Will the tools be publicly available? Um, we want to plan to make the tools publicly available. Um, that is the goal of this. Um, we recognize that sometimes um, there are uh, problems with uh, sharing because of identifiability and so on. Um, so we will have to see how that goes as the project progresses. Um, and that's part of what is also being studied with the LC implications. Uh, can the shared data be in the form of embeddings? Okay. I, I'm not sure I understand the question 100%. Shared data for what? So I'm assuming that you are going to generate some sort of generative or transformer type models, and that is going to require, it's going to create embeddings. I'm not sure what you mean by shared data in the form of embeddings. If you are asking whether the embeddings will be publicly released, again, I think that's a question around uh, identifiability, privacy, and the LC research that um, we will hopefully address during the course of uh, our project to, to figure out whether such embeddings can be safely released without um, constraints or... Should have phrased it. Yeah. Okay. So shall we share the original data or the embeddings of them? Um, I think, I think I will, it's, it's the same answer. So if the original data is shareable, then that is good. 
um, if your institution and IRB permits the original data to be shared, that's welcome. Um, the embeddings question is more complex. Um, whether the sharing is open or through um, various DAC processes, these are all uh, completely open questions that we hope to be able to address during uh, the work in the next five years. Okay. Is there any desire to connect these projects to public benchmarking challenges, such as the dream challenges? I would say that 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 would be great. Um, that could be part of some sort of a cross validation plan that a consortium may may desire to put in place. So the answer is yes, that's possible. Great. Is there a limit on the number of phenotypes that we analyze? Do we need to focus on only one disease? No, you may choose to focus on more diseases. In fact, uh, we recommend that you pick more diseases because as a consortium, then there is more available, more choice available to choose the diseases that the consortium will focus on. I think to some extent, it also depends upon what data sets you have. Yeah. Please remember that, uh, you know, we are hoping to develop multimodal data sets. And so, Uh, would you accept genes with pathogenic variants that are predictive of disease without an available cur cure, uh, but for which there are available symptoms and supportive therapies where early intervention would be helpful? Or are you mainly focusing on genes for which there are consensus clinical guidelines for screening, and prevention, et cetera? We would definitely entertain the former as much as the late latter. Uh, yeah, as long as you have knowledge that these variants have pathogenic effects. Somebody asks, can you give project example that is responsive and link with coordinating center, et cetera? I am not sure. I, I think in general, NIH, um, in our no force, try to give only examples that are non-responsive because responsive applications can be a very long list and we do not want to bias um, what active researchers can propose by stating specific responsive criteria. But we are happy to uh, take a look at your um, uh, specific aims and and offer any advice we have on responsiveness and or other questions you may have. I hope that answers the question. Though I'm not sure what link with CC, et cetera, means. Another question. Will functional validation of pathogenic variants fall within the scope of the grant? So as we explained, in silico tools or tools without um, consideration of them being used in translational genomics research for potential clinical utility are not responsive. Um, they have to have that component. Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand that question to know in what context that is said. Please feel free to send us emails. Yeah. We are happy to meet with you to answer more specifically and in detail. No. Uh, so as we said, experimental, so the question came, uh, the uh, question was clarified, experimental wet lab validation, no, uh, because there's no new data generation allowed in this. Uh, and that is not part of this, no for.
Um, could you please clarify at high level whether the proposals are to have specific LC research projects for the applications or the entire consortium for both phases? Right, so you should have specific LC research projects for the applications that fits within your, you know, um, specific aims and um, the focus uh, for your diseases and stakeholders and that's applicable so that you can also then identify the relevant um, expertise um, in your application. And then in the next phase of the project, there will be more collaborative um, identification of which tools to focus on and which uh, what are the relevant research projects there. But at the application stage, you should have specific, um, at least one specific LC project detailed. Who is responsible for the cloud computing costs associated with cross-validation of tools? Each site should come prepared for the cloud computing costs. So they should budget that amount for cross-validation of the tools. Since you know that there are going to be about two to four, you can expect on average to be cross-validating three sites, tools. So that's a good way to benchmark your budget. There's a related question. What about the data storage costs in the cloud? You should propose costs in your budget estimate for data storage also. Since variant classification, classification does not appear to be the main goal, would selecting only a subset of pathogenic variants within a gene as opposed to gene sequencing that would require variant classification be acceptable? Or are you expecting full gene sequencing that will involve variant classification for detection of as many pathogenic variants in the selected gene? No, you can. You're welcome to propose a subset of pathogenic variants. Um, as long as, of course, you are uh, sure that they have pathogenic, it's, as long as you know that they have pathogenic effects again. Um, Rob, did you want to clarify anything, Rob? I don't have anything to add to that. Can you offer specifics about the coordinating center establishes versus the site in terms of scope of, sorry, what the coordinating center establishes? So some of the roles of the coordinating center are um, things like um, helping leading the effort to come to a common data model to be used for cross-validation. Um, they also have responsibilities for um, the administrative coordination of various activities, various working groups. The LC efforts have to be coordinated. Um, there are so many choices to be made among algorithms, various other things. So they'll help with all of those coordination meetings um, in person as well as um, Zoom meetings. And consensus building. And that consensus building. Importance. Yeah. Consensus building, as Sandhya just said, is of strategic importance for getting the margin consortium to succeed. Uh, so any expertise and innovative ideas around uh, how to build consensus around the complex questions that are going to arise within the consortia um, would be greatly appreciated. Um, the sites, of course, um, are responsible for doing the LC work, doing building the 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 MLAI models themselves, validating them and cross-validating them, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 
If the data and projects are different, how do you validate using other centers? So this is a decision that will be made during the UTP phase one. Um, and also when the awards are made, um, we will look programmatically at what makes sense uh, for the consortium to meld and, and do and come together. Um, that is a choice that we'll do. Yeah, it's also why we ask you to to propose more than one um, gene disease combination based on the data that that you have and the expertise. Yeah. Um, are the development sites supposed to budget for cloud storage and cross validation costs? What should the coordination center budget for the regarding cloud costs? So part of the things the, the Coordination Center will do is establish websites and other such activities, which if you are going to use the cloud resources for that, then you should uh, put in cloud costs. Right. But also in your data model, when in developing, leading the development of the data model, you may need to test it. You may need to um, you know, validate it. So that would be a case where you would incur some costs for that. Okay, I think the next question has been answered previously. So is the CC responsible for cloud computing costs? I think Sandhya just answered that question. So we expect the, the recording and the slides to be available by tomorrow mm -hmm. on, on- A few days. Okay. okay, tomorrow, maybe a couple of days. <laughs> days. Uh, we will, yeah. Depends how quickly Zoom works for us. Um, but you you should keep an eye out on, on the, um, the Imagine website. Uh, yeah, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to forward them. And uh, we really appreciate your interest and your time today with us and sharing your questions. So um, please. Yeah, please feel free to resend the questions that you feel haven't been answered appropriately. Okay, so there's one more question. There aren't any good genomics representations in OMA common data model. Do you expect the consortium to figure this out? Um, yes, so I think that uh, collectively we'll need to figure out what makes the most sense. Uh, and these are things. It could be almost, it could be whatever the yeah. consortium decides. Exactly. It could be anything that, it, it could be one that, it, it will be one that hopefully meet the, the mission of the report based on all the data sets that are being proposed uh, for in the applications. Okay, uh, we thank you all again for your time and um, uh, thank you for the helpful questions. So we will anticipate any questions or your proposal, your applications. <laughs>